and welcome to Off My Shelves and this is a first read of Rachel Rising by Terry Moore, The Omnibus and yeah, we will get underway. Rachel Rising is one of those books that I have probably read the first volume of digitally uh, into double figures and the reason why is because it was very hard to get in Britain this omnibus version and it went in and out of stock and up and down in price all over the place and it was really really difficult to get to be honest and I've been trying to get a decently priced version of it for well over a year now. I would say even probably over two years I've probably been trying to get a copy of this but either way I got it now and it is part of an illustrious crowd in my book collection in terms of I actually paid over cover price for it which is very rare for me but I kind of decided that I wanted to put it to bed. <laughs> I wanted to basically move on with my life and not eBay search this anymore or keep an eye out for it anymore. I just wanted to read it and move on. Now I haven't read anything past pretty much the first trade volume, so the first what four or five issues or thereabouts. And again, I only did that because it is a big investment in cost. Really, I wanted to make sure that it was something that I would enjoy. And certainly, Terry Moore's art is absolutely stunning. The whole book is black and white, and Terry Moore's art is one of those things that drew me into it massively. His kind of characterization, the way he draws the world, the detail of it, the world. Everything is something that I really latched on to visually. The book itself is a hardback book, same size as a trade paperback. Uh, it comes with a ribbon bookmark and it is the complete story of Rachel Rising. You also get a paperback version of this, but I wanted the hardback version just because it's a chunky book. And to be honest, the paperback version wasn't really that much difference in cost, to be fair. Uh, the binding is sewn binding and glued and yet yeah, very good but ultimately this video is all about me going through it properly for the first time and then coming back and forth in different points through the book and letting you know my thoughts it's just a way of me kind of capturing my first instinctual feelings on the book and not dwelling on it too much so I am going to get cracking rereading the first parts and the build up and the basic premise of it is, is Rachel wakes up in the middle of the woods in a shallow grave with a mysterious female figure nearby and she wanders back to town and it turns out that she had been killed and she'd been missing the days and her eye colours changed and she's not quite sure what's going on in her life. So she talks to her friend who works in the morgue and other people and she keeps having flashbacks about being strangled but she's still not quite sure what happened. And so that's kind of all the premise that we'll give now. I'm going to get cracking reading and I will come back to you when I've read a good chunk, really. But here we go. So the book got really interesting really quickly and I'm now about 200 or 200 and 260 odd pages in. Yeah, page 269 I'm on at the moment. And I can tell you the moment that I really fell in love with this book is when one of the characters named Zoe was walking past the graveyard and the graves of all these bodies that have died in all different years previous started exploding out of the ground and then settled down into the form of a pentagonal. And yeah, that I didn't see coming. Visually it looked stunning because the art in this continues to be better and better and better. The characterization on the faces, the inventiveness of the scenes and then visual visualizing those scenes is great there's a fantastic amount of imagination going on but the character development is one of the main things that really intrigued me and blown me away more than anything because I didn't realize that I would like the characters so quickly because they're so full of humor and warmth but then some of them are so kind of twisted and strange and intriguing but it's full of really engaging interesting characters a predominantly female cast males come in now and again but they pretty much very negative characters for the most part in this story mainly all female led characters which is fine by me i really don't mind at all but either way rachel is joined by her friend jet and then her auntie johnny and then there's another young girl zoe now zoe's story is 
almost separate or go in parallel to Rachel because Rachel is obviously still trying to find out why she rose from the ground and what's going on and all the while this other mysterious female character that was overlooking her grave in the first couple of pages slowly but surely reveals more and more about herself and as you get to around the 150-200 page mark you get full confirmation really that this is pretty much an all out witch demon story and the crux of the story is this town Manson in America had created a problem for itself way way back when several hundred years before this story took place about 300 or so years and they had done a witch hunt and so the witches are now to a certain degree coming back to wreak revenge but it is nowhere near as simple and as straightforward as that because all of the witches that were killed have different opinions and different attitudes and different personalities but there's also other mystical elements coming in and other kind of demonic elements coming in and that's where Zoe's story comes in. Zoe is this young girl that's introduced quite early on as this vicious murderer but again her story is nowhere near as straightforward as you might think and I'll try not to reveal too much about any of these characters so you get that shock and that intrigue yourself when you read it but needless to say all the characters so far have got a sufficient amount of mystery to them and even when parts are revealed like certain elements of Zoe are revealed and her character has changed slightly she's still engaging and interesting certain parts of Rachel and her background when they are revealed it still creates a lot more intrigue one of the things I'm liking loads is just how relaxed the main cast of characters is with this madness that's in front of them they're quite jokey and quite playful and they don't really lose the sight of their own humanity and humor too much they're constantly you know joking and it's really nicely well paced it doesn't take its world too intensely seriously at the moment i got a feeling that it will get far more serious and the humor will die down a little bit when that story kicks in but at the moment it's just full of really intriguing visual scenes character developments and certainly the story of the witchcraft and demons and all that are being slowly but surely peeled away so it's not all dumped on you straight away it's slowly peeled away and it's still peeling away as I, as I read really and I'm intrigued to get into it even more and read even more so I'm gonna get doing that well as is always the way with these videos I tend to plough through at some point and not stop and record and that's exactly what happened to you. I ploughed through and got through the rest of Rachel Rising. We left off kind of just before the halfway point really the last time I recorded and first and foremost the entire book from start to finish is superb artistry. I mean I can't really come up with a better way of saying the artwork in this is outstanding on every level the visualization like from what i mentioned earlier on in terms of the graves exploding more of that happened with like rats coming out of sewer pipes this amazing image of hundreds of witches just hanging in midday and i could go on and on and on and the characterization on the faces how the characters are formed and their bodies and their posture everything is absolutely sublime art wise I got no issues. It was a feast for the eyes on every single level. My only complaints come with how the story panned out and how it played out. And specifically, the main character of Rachel herself, really, I had issues with. This mysterious woman that turns out to be known as Lilith. And I won't give you her origins because her origins are a major part of the story that I don't want to spoil, really. But needless to say, the more you find out about her and the more you find out about another demonic character the more it turns from being a witch story into a very biblical story and what i mean by that is this kind of good versus evil story or in fact evil destroying evil but either way it, get, it certainly gets far more biblical and less you know typically witch story which is similar to what cullen bunn did for harrow county that had the same thing is the witches were introduced but then the witches turned into these immortal beings and this is very similar to that on many levels so if you've read that story then you'll see certain similarities in the way that story turns from a witch story into this immortal being fight off battle type thing a lot of the conflict with Lilith comes to a head really halfway through the book and that's all great it is 
ever so slightly anticlimactic but not drastically it was still enjoyable and great but there was more of an expectation in my mind for that meeting and that face off if you will and so that battle kind of plays out around the halfway point and then afterwards Lilith takes a back seat really to the storyline which is my first issue because Lilith was one of these characters that seemingly intrigued me a lot more than others present in the book and so with her suddenly not being there that was a bit strange for me because she was one of the characters that I was most intrigued and taken by really and wanted to find out more about but then it chose to focus squarely on Rachel and finding out who actually killed her originally actually strangled her and put her in that shallow grave at the beginning and which is weird because it almost didn't have time at all to focus on that because as soon as she was awoken she went off finding out about why she was immortal and, and wouldn't die and all this and then the Lilith character came in and they Various things happen and she didn't really have a chance to breathe or think about okay who murdered me in the first place so that certainly comes but then what comes with it is a focus on Rachel and developing her storyline and I realized quite early on in that storyline so just after the halfway point that Rachel wasn't really a character that intrigued me much at all it was the premise of her coming back to life and then these other characters like Zoe and Lilith and other people coming into the plot they were the things that really kept me engaged and so when they took a slight back seat and the focus was more on Rachel I, I wasn't as engaged it was still enjoyable but it didn't grip me as much as the rest of the book and as much as the overarching mystery really but either way as you went forward certain characters like Jet which is another really interesting character took a back seat Zoe does make a resurgence and really is one of the best parts of this book. I think Zoe's story is phenomenal and her as a character is phenomenal in every way. And eventually, obviously, as the book says, not long after the conflict halfway happens, Lilith does make a resurgence. And then it beats a path then to this final conflict between these two forces of evil i suppose you would say it so when lilith does eventually make a resurgence she confronts rachel and tries to enlist her help which is a shift in the character earlier on she was just a relentless revenge seeking witch and then when she comes back she's almost kind of trying to make friends with rachel and try and enlist her into fighting this other demonic power that's been there from the start as well and she tells Rachel that she can't do it without her but then strangely she does do it without her Rachel kind of takes a full backseat to all of that which is weird because the book really makes a big meal out of Rachel being fundamental to helping Lilith solve this final issue and then she doesn't do anything Lilith does it all on her own when the biblical kind of clashes happen and they end they are thoroughly enjoyable really slightly again anticlimactic I would say in terms of the final clash and when I say anticlimactic they quick <laughs> they really just come and go and you think oh that's it is it but I wouldn't say I didn't dislike them I was just I just had higher expectations of them and then obviously and finally you get to why Rachel was lying dead in that grave in the first place and you find out about her killer and everything like that and I did very much like Rachel in that story arc and that ending more than anything else because it stripped away a lot of the supernatural elements to it and kind of give very much a realistic grounding to why that happened. And yeah, overall, I have to say that it was thoroughly enjoyable. It genuinely was. It was just a few points in the story I would have like to have seen more and I would have liked to have seen less of other points and that's not a major issue it's just the author decided to focus on some characters more than others at certain points in the book and yeah in general I would highly recommend kind of reading Rachel Rising because it is very engaging and particularly the first half of the book is really quick paced really engaging had me right from the get-go it did a little bit after the big conflict but then it does make a good strong resurgence and finish and i like the way it finishes as well it finishes very much as it started with humor and that's one thing that i didn't realize going into this book that i would get is so much 
smiling and laughter to be honest because the character is really lovable and really jokey that's why I didn't like the fact that Jet took a back seat because she was really funny and her story kind of separated itself from Rachel as you went forward through the, re through the second half of the book and same as Zoe, whenever Zoe disappeared, it was almost like this kind of heart and humour of the series disappeared with it because Rachel was a little bland in character development. But either way, I'm sure some people love Rachel and hate Zoe. I can't believe that it's ever going to be the case though. But either way, Rachel Rising is certainly well worth your time and well worth a read. It is available in paperback as well as this and in individual trade paperbacks as well. It is a little difficult to get outside of America, but if you can get it, jump on in and have a read. And if anything, the major thing you will get is sublime, stunning artistry from Terry Moore. But thank you very much for watching and I will catch you on the next one.